right. And as this is kind of people are still kind of trickling in, dropping in their locations, dropping in those Instagrams and those URLs, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Feel free to drop some questions in there. I'll try my best to uh, hop in, you know, and grab these questions in real time. If not, I'll circle back at the end, which is pretty cool. All right. So we're going to jump right into some numbers because we're, we all know advertising and marketing and all that is important. But why is it important? And how important is it? Well, these are some numbers that are current numbers. I mean, these change pretty much daily at this point. But when you have a billion monthly active Instagram users, 2.7 billion people on Facebook, which may surprise you that Facebook has more users monthly than Instagram. We'll talk about that a little bit. And then Google. Google's the biggie. And it's 5.6 billion. And that has almost doubled during the COVID crisis. If you go back a year ago, the number is about 50% of that. So people are using Google more often, they're on computers more often, we're shopping online more often, our habits have changed. And to be honest, these aren't just habits anymore. We didn't, we haven't just pivoted, we've changed our behaviors. So people are shopping in a different way now and we need to be able to reach them where they're at in the current business climate and the current world we live in. One of the things I wanna talk about before we jump into ad types is Facebook and Instagram. A lot of people are surprised that Facebook has more active users. The truth is, of course, that we use them very differently. Five, six, eight years ago, we used Facebook as the social media. That's how we communicated. That's how we posted pictures and did everything else. But over the years, it's kind of evolved. And I think Instagram is more of how we use social media. We communicate with each other. We share things from our day. Here's my picture of my dinner, whatever it may be. Facebook becomes a good business resource. It's a place where businesses can share a lot of content as well as some promotional stuff but a lot of content about the business, about the lifestyle surrounding the brand and things like that. And this is important for a couple of reasons. Um, but think about it in practical terms. If you were finding a new business online and you know, you kind of, you kind of researching them and trying to figure out if they're legit or not, and they didn't have a business Facebook page, would that make you stop and wonder if this business is maybe legitimate? Does it seem quite normal that they don't have a business page? Now, of course, uh, we don't all use social media personally, but almost every business you could think of that's legitimate, you know, sizable business will have a, some kind of a social media presence. And generally that's going to include a Facebook page. So a lot of those users, of course, are people that are gonna be looking for businesses on there, trying to find out more about this business, what they're about, what they do, maybe if they're doing pop-ups or what kind of business they are and things like that. But these numbers are the core of why marketing is so important. And before we get too far into this, I'm not a marketing expert. I'm not a marketing genius. Um, you know, my background is I have, I have a lot of retail background. I've owned businesses, restaurants, all kinds of different things. Certainly spent a lot of time doing marketing on the ground level, building out ads, building out campaigns and things like that. But one of the most important things to understand is where your customers are at, where your target audience is at. And that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today. You need to understand that target audience and have those good branding principles before you launch into this whole uh, kind of ad and marketing campaigns. The last thing I want anyone to do is spend a bunch of money on some ads and not really have the right target audience. Or maybe you don't have your branding in order and they land on your page and you know the, the homepage and the images and the copy doesn't really resonate with that target audience. And it winds up being just kind of a missed opportunity and some wasted money. So let's dive into this a little bit. We're gonna talk about ad types. And we've got a few examples here of different ad types. These are a few of the most common ad types that you've probably seen on the web on social media. Carousel ads, which sometimes people call a slideshow. Dynamic ads or retargeting ads. And then Google shopping ads going left to right. We've all seen these a hundred times. Sometimes you probably glance over them if you're just scrolling through Instagram. You know, probably if you go through Instagram, your sec every second or third image you're going to see is going to be some kind of a sponsored ad. It's highly likely, depending on your shopping habits and things. Same thing with Google. Open up Google right now. Right at the top, you're going to see one, two, three ads. You're going to see pictures that are ads. This is the kind of culture we live in where we don't even notice the ads anymore because they're so prevalent in our life and what we do. Facebook carousel ads let you show two or more images or videos. Headlines, links, call to actions, all in a single ad. Uh, users can scroll through the carousel ads by swiping on a mobile device, clicking the arrows on a computer screen, you know, whatever device they're on. It has a couple benefits. It's really used to drive discovery 
and bring new visitors to your site versus like retargeting ads that's work a little differently. If you have several different facets to your business, let's say you are selling uh, sunglasses and shirts and bracelets and hats and some different things, then a carousel ad is great to show different parts of what you do, different aspects of your business. You can showcase specific products. You can tell a story through successive carousel ads, one after another. Um, you can actually, when using Shopify and things, you can pull images directly from your uploaded product catalog. So it's really easy to run these. It's really easy to kind of compile a story or show kind of a cross section of your business. But keep in mind, this is primarily, you know, something we use for discovery. You can use it other ways, but it's a good tool for people to discover what you're all about that first time. Going to move next into dynamic, sometimes called, called these retargeting ads. These promote relevant products to customers who have already expressed interest on your website or somewhere else on the internet. Um, you can create a single ad template that automatically uses these assets from your store to kind of show these targeted ads to targeted people. So imagine um, if you are in a tennis shoe group on Facebook, well, it's highly likely you'd receive a retargeting ad for tennis shoes, whether that's Adidas or Nike or whatever. It just kind of makes sense. If you're, you know, you've, we've all gone online and we've searched for something and we started getting ads for it, we probably did it for e-commerce day, right? You start getting ads over and over again for e-commerce day popping up everywhere. And that's retargeting. That's using data that we've put out there online. We've expressed interest by checking out different things. And now that ad is finding us based on that and showing us things that we think are relevant content. If I like tea, like I mentioned, then it's pretty relevant. To, it's pretty easy to assume that I would probably get ads for tea if I'm checking out tea websites and tea Facebook groups and all that kind of good stuff. The third type is a Google shopping campaign. These are fully automated campaigns that use smart bidding to allow you to advertise across all the Google networks. And it's a lot. There's, you know, you have the Google search, you have YouTube, you have Gmail, Hangouts, you have tons of different things Google uses. Um, now, I don't know if you've ever seen an ad on a Gmail or on a Hangout, but it's a place they could potentially put it. There's pros and cons to Google, sh Google shopping ads. They're fully automated, which is great. Not a lot of work, not a lot for you to do. Some of the cons are that the very limited reporting for merchants on performance. You don't have the Facebook insight tools to really understand how these ads are performing. It's hard to refine the strategy as new products or marketing initiatives kind of come up. Um, you don't have a lot of tools at your fingertips. And by the way, Google is going to refer to these as Google smart shopping campaigns. So sometimes terminology is a little fuzzy there. The other thing that can be a big help with Google Analytics can tie in and give you a little more insight to some of this. But just understand that you don't really have as near as much data coming in from this just from Google uh, natively. Let me show you a quick video on how Google shopping campaigns work. You've be put a, a lot of work into your business and it's time to get noticed. Introducing Google Smart Shopping Campaign, a powerful marketing tool that helps shoppers find you with targeted ads. Setting up a campaign in Shopify is simple. Sync existing products from your Shopify store. Set your daily budget and launch your campaign. Google's smart technology takes care of all the details, like bidding and ad placement, so you can drive the most sales for your budget. Your ads will appear on Search, Gmail, YouTube, and across Google's display network. You don't need to be a marketing expert, and you only pay when shoppers click on your ads. Create your campaign in Shopify today. Help shoppers find you. Cool. Let's unpack that a little bit before we go back, before we go too far into this. Stop this. There we go. First thing you heard is that you only pay when people click. And we're going to explore this a little bit, a little bit more in just a second. But Google works very differently than Facebook, that you're not putting $5 on one ad and setting a target audience, and it's all going to kind of be based on what you put in. You're essentially going to select a product, and Google will do the rest. They're going to choose where they put it, when they put it, and essentially how they're going to market that ad on your behalf where they're going to put it in the, in the world of internet. And you pay when people click. So you set your daily budget, and essentially when that budget is hit, uh, you know, no more, they're not gonna show you anymore. So it's good and bad that you're not actually paying for an ad that no one's clicking on. Of course, the bad side is that you're giving us some control and some data. So how do we make all this happen? How do we do all this? Well, in a Shopify admin, there's actually a marketing tab. And this is kind of what I wanna to touch on today a little bit. Right within the Shopify admin, you can create various marketing campaigns without leaving your, the Shopify kind of back dashboard of your store. 
we have Google, Facebook, Snapchat. This is Ping and Kit. We'll talk to these a little bit at the very end. SMS bump, if you're looking to do text message marketing, this is Saguno. It's a great uh, email marketing app that's out there. There's other things that integrate as well. It's constantly expanding. But the point is that you can do these without having to go to Facebook's ad manager or deal with some of the challenges that Facebook or Google can present. If you've ever tried to set up Google Shops and Google Selling Accounts and Facebook ad managers and business managers and all of that, it, it's not much fun. It's not very easy. It's not very intuitive. Um, however, it is possible. And once they're set up, it's pretty easy to manage. Instagram does not do ads directly through this yet. It is still done through Facebook. It's a bit of a uh, bit of a different can of worms altogether. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit as well. But Facebook is Instagram's big brother. Everything goes through Facebook. So you can do Instagram ads, but you have to do those directly through Facebook and Instagram. So as we're looking in the back end, this is kind of what we're looking at here in terms of a store admin. Before we start creating campaigns, we need to set up the following. You need to have a Facebook business account. You need to have your ad manager set up, the business manager set up. They're gonna, that's where they're gonna get your credit card information and be sure they can bill you because you know Facebook's gonna get paid for the ads. And then lastly, you're gonna install the Facebook marketing app. Now this has changed a little bit as well. We have kind of a new rollout and there's a new integration with Facebook and Instagram. One of the things you should know is that Facebook and Instagram both seamlessly integrate with your Shopify store. So that when someone clicks on a, a picture that you've posted on Instagram, they can actually go right to your checkout to buy it without having to leave and figure out who you are and all those kind of things. Now, with Google, uh, one other thing I should mention, you need to be the admin of these accounts to set these up. Very important note. Um, now, with Google to run Google ads, you set up that Google Merchant Center account, which is not always the easiest thing to do. You set up a Google Ads account, you link both those together, and then you're ready to rock and roll within the Shopify admin. We can walk you through these in a one-on-one -on -one session. We can do these with you. Uh, we have some videos online. I'll link some of these sessions here at the end as well. Uh, there's plenty of resources that can help walk you through this because it's not always the most intuitive thing in the world. Now, creating our first campaign. So we have all our branding materials. We have our images. We have some copy. We have a website and a logo. We have a Facebook business account. We have our Shopify store. Everything's kind of set up and ready to rock and roll. So we want to get this ad up and going. Well. The first thing is, is this marketing right here. We've connected these accounts. We want to go to that marketing tab and we're going to cl click on create marketing activity up in the upper right hand corner. Little video is going to walk you through this. Uh, Pam, let me see if I can find that video link to that video. It's built into a deck, but let me see if I can break that out and I'll direct message you with that. And you see on the screen here, we're just creating a campaign real quick. Once you click this, you're gonna see a bunch of different marketing options and all these things are integrated with Shopify. So we're doing all this from the back end without bouncing out. So we're gonna start with the Facebook dynamic retargeting campaign. And before we start, please note on the right-hand side that products are being pulled in automatically. Um, essentially, you know, this is kind of, it's gonna use a lot of smart science to figure out which products are your best sellers and most likely you can change these, of course, within Facebook. You can put on whatever picture you want to use. But a dynamic ad is going to retarget shoppers by creating customized ads with products that they viewed on your store. So the most viewed items by your target audience is most likely what they're going to pull up first. So let's create this market activity here real quick. There we go. Let's follow the little box. Activity name. One tip with the activity name, please make sure that it's something that you can find next year. If you just put... Um, sale one, well, when you go back next year, you may not be able to reference what that is or even remember what that is. So if it is a Black Friday sale 2020, use the title. If it is December 3rd, 2020, use that as your title, but use something that you can reference year over year. So you can go back last year and see what I did for Mother's Day, what I did for Valentine's Day, and then you can look at the performance of them and learn from kind of those experiences. Copy. Ad copy doesn't need to be long, doesn't need to be complex, doesn't need to be anything magical. It does need to have some good copyright practices to it. And without getting too far into copy, make sure it is engaging. There's a call to action that it is something that gets people to actually want to take an action and not just read it and go, hm, that was nice. So as we go down, we're gonna to wanna to see the ad copy. 
the ad budget, and the start and end date. Now, if you ever notice this, and you do this, this box is oftentimes not checked. And if you don't check that, Facebook's gonna keep running that ad and billing your credit card until there's no more money to take on it. So please, please, please make sure you check that set end date. Do yourself a favor. Now, once this is good, we want ready to, ready to publish it. But before we do that, you definitely want to preview it. If you look up here, check it on mobile, check it on desktop, make sure it looks good. Make sure it looks good on both formats. Remember, probably 80% of your customers are looking at this on a mobile phone or a mobile device. So please, please preview it on a mobile device. And once that's done, we're gonna publish it. And we've done all this without ever leaving Shopify, without ever leaving your admin, without you know having to go into Facebook, sign in, pull up a different screen, figure out an ad manager and a business manager and all those kinds of things. It's all integrated, super easy to use. So down here, down here, this, there we go. Now another example of how a Facebook dynamic retargeting ad might look we have three different three different uh, ads right here. And all these ads are super effective in driving clicks just by using some great graphic and great copy. Take a look at these real quick. And which one jumps out at you? Which one do you think is the best ad? What well, kind of depends on what you're showing and what you're looking to show. The one in the middle, are we selling pants or are we selling shoes? It may not be evident right away. The big shoe on the left, Absolutely. Great ad, great cop, great picture, great, uh, great image, and kind of a nice jumps out at you. However, it only shows one facet of the business, only shows a gray shoe. And that may not resonate with different genders, for example, or different age groups. The one on the right shows a little bit of a broader spectrum across your business, but isn't really as impactful as the one on the left. So each one kind of has some strengths and weaknesses. You have to kind of decide what it is you want to show. For example, the one on the right has a little more copy. Recycled water bottles, comfortable ecosystem uh, insoles, free shipping and returns. And it shows a lot of different colors, color palettes. So it really is about what message you're trying to convey to the world through the ad. And that's one of the basic principles of any kind of marketing is simply, what do you wanna show? What do you wanna say? And how are you gonna communicate that brand, that value proposition to them? Let's check out a Google Shopping campaign. We're gonna create a campaign just like we did for Facebook going to have a little automated video play. Here we go. Let's see here. So up on the right, we're going to create automation. All right, so Google Shopping campaigns. Uh, activity name, same thing. Make sure it's something you can find next year so you can reference it. Daily budget. Now, Google is going to recommend the daily average budget is five bucks. Google suggests this is the amount you need to spend before Google Shopping really impacts your sales. Um, I'll leave it up to you. You know that's the recommended amount. But remember, if you spend a hundred, you put a hundred bucks in there and it doesn't work out, they're not going to give it back to you. So be wise, be judicious with what you spend. And up at the top, publish. Now that's it, and that's a little bit scary because we're used to Facebook. We have a lot more controls, right? We can drill into target audiences. We can drill into different images and different kinds of things and placements and budgets and start dates and stop dates and all these kind of cool things. Google, do, Google doesn't do that. It is simply going to be this a name and a budget and they're going to do the rest of the work. The downside of course could be that what if you are, you know, slide number 100 on the right on the Google search or your, your ad is at the very bottom of a Gmail session. Maybe nobody sees it. You don't really have that control over it. There's SEO impact, there's a lot of good that comes from it, but you don't have as much control. So you are trusting that Google is going to do the right thing and they're gonna use their technology and their algorithms to represent you well. A couple other things here, super important to realize. So you only pay if someone clicks on the shopping ad. Google Ads uses the average daily budget. If your daily budget is $10, Google might spend five bucks one day and 15 the next. Google will decide how your money is used over a period of time. So again, you're giving up some control and you're really trusting Google. Now we trust Google for a lot of things, so that's not really abnormal for us. However, um, it's definitely a bit different than what we normally would do. Products in your campaign, again, they're gonna take control over this. End date, campaign duration, they're gonna choose the end date. Now you can manually go in and pause these and turn it off. I would set a phone reminder to turn these off when you're done. 
Otherwise, Google's going to keep this working. And this is really more, more uh, effective over a long campaign. I would say on average, it takes about 30 days for Google to rank your products and optimize shopping ad placement. So it's not really the kind of campaign you're going to run for two days on a weekend sale. It's not really what it is. It's more of a long-term kind of a thing. And then shopping ad placement, this is where Google tells you we're going to put your stuff wherever we see fit. Here's a couple of Google shopping ad examples. The bottom is the search ads. The top are the shopping ads. And as you know, these probably scroll all the way over. So if you are way over here somewhere, it might be tough to be seen. Would I use Google Shopping as a primary marketing campaign? Maybe not. But it's a great supplemental campaign in addition to the other things you're doing online. And as you can see here, Allbirds was the search query. But you got this shoe tossed in there too which doesn't make a lot of sense. It's a different target audience, different shoe, different price point altogether. So again, that's Google doing its thing. Now, if you're feeling overwhelmed yet and you need some more tools to help, we actually have some tools that can help with this. You can hire marketing experts, you can hire ad agencies and all of that, but really getting an understanding of the basics of marketing is actually relatively simple. Consistency and content are two big keys understanding some very basic principles while how Facebook and Instagram work. Um, these are things we can help you with in one-on-one -on -one sessions. These are things, there's plenty of videos and research online to do. But before you start putting out a lot of money, to you know Jamie's point here is a limited budget, before you start putting out a lot of money, it's first best to understand what your target audience is, where they're going to be at online. Are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Um, are they on Snapchat? Where do they live? What is their lifestyle like? And make sure that your content is spot on for that target audience and that you're sending it to the right place. Marketing in a nutshell is really just the right right copy, the right image to the right person in the right place, all wrapped up in a nice brand. It sounds a lot more mysterious than it is, but really if you have the basis in place of your business with some good branding, some good copy, some good images, it's just figuring out who that audience is and where they're at online. And then essentially getting it in front of them via a paid ad or using organic marketing tools like SEO and things like that. So limited budget, my first choice is always organic marketing, focus on SEO, email marketing, and lots of good quality content on Facebook and Instagram without paying for anything. And then sprinkle in your paid ads and things like that. Um, we have a feature called Kit and Ping, and I won't go too far into this because we're a little low on time, but if you stop by the booth, we'd love to talk to you about it. Kit is artificial intelligence. It's entirely free. And what Kit does is it's actually going to be your kind of personal marketing assistant. It's going to basically say, hey, do you want to run an ad today? Sure. Who would you like to market? And you're going to say, you know, women or men or whatever. It's going to ask you questions through text messages, and it's going to run these ads for you, which is a really, really, really cool thing. Let me find you an example here real quick. Kit and ping. I'm going to scroll through just a touch. And here we go. Let me find that's good. Go. Here we go. So you can see a little bit about how this works. Essentially, it's going to proactively say, hey, do you want to run an ad today? You can get reports. You can get analytics. You can run ads. You can run paid ads or regular ads. You can set your budgets, do your target audience, all through this second assistant that doesn't take breaks, doesn't call in sick, doesn't give you attitude, doesn't quit or anything else. One of the caveats is that it really works best when you have between 500 and 1,000 or above followers. If you only have 30 followers online, there's not a lot of data for it to work with. If you have 1,000 or 5,000 followers online, hey, it's going to be a big help to you. So here's an example you can see. It's actually going to run through the whole process. It's just a conversation. Completely free, built into your store. Um, it's artificial intelligence. We make it. We fix it. We support it. It's a very cool thing. Um, please, if you're interested in kind of using Shopify and you're interested in having an assistant help you out a little bit, this is a great way to go. And, again, it doesn't replace all the marketing and content you're doing, but it is a really good supplement. It's a good assistant, but it's not going to do it all for you we got to kind of do that part ourselves. With that being said, in the last few minutes, do we have any questions? I see here. It keeps logging off recently, running really well. 
Yeah, that may so that could be an issue with the new Facebook. Uh, there's a new integration with Facebook, so make sure you're updated on the most recent integration. You probably have a little bar on your top saying, hey, it's time to join the new Facebook. It's pretty cool. So instead of having separate sales channels for Facebook and Instagram, now there's just one altogether, which is a pretty cool thing. So you don't have to actually worry about like having two different things to manage. You can just have one. Sorry, the alarm's going off here. You can have just one little uh, um, integration and manage everything on Instagram and Facebook from there. Any other questions regarding marketing, Shopify, any of these kind of things? I know it's a lot to kind of dive through in a, in a quick 25 minutes or so. Yeah, the new Facebook is much easier to use. Took a little while to get used to, but like everything else, things evolve and change. Okay, Angela, that would be a great topic for a one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, in that, let me drop a link here in the chat really quick. I can we have some one we could do a one-on-one -on -one session with you and we can actually talk specifically about your product and your store and whatever challenges you may be having this link right here is a place where you can book the free one-on-one -on -one sessions it's gonna be with our LA team but don't sweat that no matter where you're at we're gonna take care of you Oop, there we go this is the link for one-on-one -on -one appointments Kit is in the Shopify App Store. Ping is kind of a um, King is kind of a Ping is kind of a place for all your different chat apps, and Kit can kind of work, work and live together. That is in your your actual Play Store or your Apple App Store. So that is something you're going to add to your phone. Kit is in the Shopify App Store. So from Mike, can you select which products in the Shopify are eligible for Google Smart Ads? You can. So when you go into your product page, you can actually choose and see where products are available. You can decide not to show them on Facebook, not to show them on Google, not to show them in your point of sale. You have complete control over where things are displayed. Absolutely. Yep, ping is on your phone. Link not valid, huh? Let's see here. Let's see, let me find the link again. So they get when I try and cut, paste, talk, and type. Oh yeah, there's an S on appointments. Accuracy is everything, isn't it? All righty. Here's again. Here's a link for the sessions, complete with the S on the end. Sorry about that. Uh, any apps recommend marketing help for beginners? Kit would be a great resource because it is going to help. There's really not an app that's going to um, do this for you. It is a lot about consistency and content. So having great content and putting it up consistently, meaning you know not just doing it once a month, being consistent, three times a week, same time, same target audience, those kind of things are going to get you a lot further than any app is really going to do for you. SEO is a big part. That's a really deep rabbit hole to dive down. Love to chat about that more in person. But the SEO would also be something to dive into as a beginner, for sure. It takes a long time to build out. Anything else? Any other questions? Because I think they're about to get the hook and drag me off stage. I heard a little alarm going off and everything. If not, I'll stop that so you get my big old head. All right. I think next Richard is up. So thank you guys for your time. Appreciate everything. And if you have any questions, stop by our booth. We're, we're in the other chat.